Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll be honest, I'm doing the intro before I shoot any content and I don't know what this video is gonna be about. And the reason is, is because it has been a very challenging day. Um, and so I feel like I'm not in the best headspace in terms of even wanting to do the video or talk, but these are the times that I feel like it's necessary to push myself to create some real content to really just talk and just take you with me no matter what that looks like good bad ugly it may be haphazard it may be all those things but i'm just going to take you along with me and we're going to ch chat we're going to do some stuff and it may be a smorgasbord i'll just tell you that now so it has been an interesting week from a weather standpoint um it has been ramping up hot into the 90s we we have not gotten to the 90s until this week i'm in zone 7a in in tennessee and today the heat index was 112. like we've gone from like 85 to like 95 and the next four days it's supposed to be 97 um between 97 and 99 um as a base temperature so even though that's i would say pretty normal in terms of june july type of thing um, it certainly is different than what we've been having since we started putting plants out. So there's definitely an adjustment. We have had a lot of rain this gardening season to date. Um, today it rained and kind of cooled things off. So it does feel pleasant out, outside right now. So I came down here to just look to see how did everything fare today in the um, extreme heat and see what is going on. And then also um in terms of the other reason why i feel like it's just been a challenging day uh, for those who don't know i do all my own um business i have an hr consulting agency hr is what i went to school for it's what i've done in corporate uh, america for 20 plus years as an executive and then i started my own business five years ago and it's been a challenging business entrepreneur day if any of you have a business um at all whether it's your farm business or something outside of gardening you know that there are days every now and then when you question <laughs> why are you doing this right and today was one of those today is one of those days um i've been in business for five years it'll be six years in october and i probably have felt this way mm, maybe four or five times so in terms of the odds <laughs> that's not a whole lot but today was definitely one of those days and then it just spilled over into okay what am i doing with my gardening life like okay i got my my <laughs> my business life that okay has been challenging and then i feel like so far and again we're still kind of new and not when i say new we're at the end of june so we are definitely not done with the summer season but the first i would say four to six weeks has been the challenging that I've had so far. So for those that are new, I've been um, gardening for three years, so not very, very long. The first um, the first two years was, I mean, in terms of harvest, it was A-okay. I had, I wouldn't even say I had enough to feed my family like four years, definitely not that type of harvest. I was just getting my feet wet. Last year was a really good year um, for us as we expanded and we had um, abundance um we had definitely food to preserve for the year i gave a lot away and i also lost a lot uh, which hence you know i expended a little bit more this year and we came up with the idea that we were going to sell our produce sell you know and it says not anything too heavy in terms of like oh my goodness we got to do this like it's not for us to eat it is really just another business that we're starting to educate to show people how to grow food and then to, to sell the excess what i mean by excess meaning my primary goal of growing food is to provide food for my family that's my primary goal my primary goal is not to sell i gotta feed my family first and so that's the primary goal and then what is excess excuse me this year where i feel like i can do it <coughs> excuse me i will sell that i've had my first sale um which that is a blessing um and then the person who bought the first time she was like hey you have a customer so let me know when you have more stuff and then i also gained another customer this week <clears throat> so that's my second they haven't bought anything yet but they said hey these are the things that i want do you have it and i'm like yes and so hopefully that will go through so i definitely can't complain um but i do feel like this has been a really challenging four to six weeks from a garden perspective compared to last year i'm having an extreme amount of pest pressure that i have not had um 
to this level in the past. Now, I would say last year I had Japanese Beatles. They did their thing, I don't know, for two or three weeks. Then they were they were gone, right? Um, I also had, I, no, I didn't even have hornworms last year, but the year before that I had a lot of hornworms. I had a lot of, you know, um, Japanese Beatles. I had a lot of squash bugs and all of that. Um, but last year I felt like we fertilized. I felt like we, you know, did a little bit of succession planting. And of course this year you guys know I am doing way more succession planting. I try to be thoughtful. I've tried to be intentional and I have way more pests this year than I did in the previous years. And so it's kind of, when I say stumped me, just like, man, and it's, it's early in the season. It's not like we're at the tail end of the season and we've had such abundance and now it's coming in and all that. It's been at the beginning of the season. Um, and so it, is, it has stretched me um, as a gardener, right? And there's a difference between growing food and being a gardener. And what I mean by that is, is that we have to, and I'm talking to myself, I just happen to be on camera, but I'm really talking to me. I have to get to the place where I'm not just growing food. I want to be a gardener. That means it's not always pretty, right? And that means I have to keep learning so that I don't make the same mistakes twice so that I don't do, um, I don't know so that it's better each time and I'm learning lessons along the way if you just grow food then it's real easy to give up like it's real easy to give up and one of the things like I told you I don't even know what this video is gonna be about I'm just talking <laughs> we are gonna do some stuff I think um, but one of the things that has been heavy on my mind and that just kind of surprised me I guess is that the same thing that it takes to be successful in gardening is the same things that it takes to be successful in life and in business. Here was Here's what I mean by that. Uh, being an entrepreneur and being in business is a lot of mindset work, right? There are times when it's feast and there's times when it feels like it's famine, right? To be an entrepreneur and own your own business, you gotta have a certain level of grit. You gotta have a certain level of stick to itness. You gotta have a certain level of perseverance, right? Because you basically are killing what you eat, meaning, if you're if you're surviving based off your business, you got to go out there and get it. You can't just give up at the drop of a dime. And so you constantly have to do mind work to say, you know what? It's going to be all right. I am good at what I do, blah, 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 blah. And in life, it's the same thing, right? Even if you work a, a, a job, there's mindset issues. We go through imposter syndrome. We go through, man, am I good enough? You know, are they going to find out at any moment <laughs> that I can't do this job? There's mindset work. And I guess in my mind, because gardening is my hobby, right? I hadn't really contemplated that it takes the same perseverance. It takes the same grit. It takes the same mindset work because y'all, I've been struggling with the gardening mindset, like seeing all these pests, seeing dead leaves when I come into my tunnel and then not knowing what to do. Like, I don't know. Okay. If I do this, it's going to automatically, you know, get better. I'm asking, you know, you guys for suggestions. I am asking my other gardening friends that are more experienced than me for suggestions. So help and support is available. But in terms of me immediately, oh, I see a problem. Let me know what to do. I'm still learning. Right. Um, and so because in my mind, it's my hobby and things have not gone according to my plan so far this gardening season. It has been difficult on my mindset. Like I have like been like, girl, can you can you grow anything? Like, what, what why did you open your mouth and tell people you can you you going to sell food? Like, why did you do that? Right? And I know um uh, for those that are Christians, I know that it's nothing but the devil, right? And there've been times I wanted to give up. And there have been times, and I don't want to get emotional. But there've been times that I'm just like, what am I doing? Like how did I have such great success last year? And so far this year, like, it's okay, but it's not what I planned. And it's not as good as it was this time last year, right? <sighs> so it's been kind of rough. And what I want to do in this channel is that I want to inspire and I want to encourage. And so... That's the reason why I pushed myself to talk and do the video. Because if I wait until I'm having a really, really good day tomorrow and things turn around tomorrow and I get on here with my super uber excited self and I don't show you 
some of the real stuff in between, you may think, man, this is easy. You may think she has it all together. You may think that I never have an issue and that all you see on my channel is abundance. And that's not, that's not true this season, okay? That is not true this season. Y'all gotta stop crying because it's burning my eyes, okay? And I'm out here, you got the allergens, you got the, y'all, okay. And I need to spray something because these bugs are trying to take me out. So I don't need to be crying. I don't need my eyes to be burning. And I don't need to be bugs biting me and all of that. So I'm about to pull it all the way together. Okay. But it's been challenging. Okay. That's all I will say. But today, today, I refuse to give up. I refuse to just sit down and wallow in what I thought it should be and, and wallow in what I think it could be or why it's not like that right now. I'm just gonna try to keep learning, keep growing, and it's gonna be what it, and I'll keep praying and that's what it's gonna be, okay? And the one time, y'all, hold the phone. Okay, got myself together, <laughs> maybe, now so I'm trying to get in my eye. Okay, maybe you can relate, right? It may not be for anybody. It may just be for me <laughs> and I'm on your couch and y'all are, but the fact that you're, I feel like you're listening, even though somebody going to listen to this video, somebody going to like it, <laughs> somebody going to put a comment. Maybe it is for me and I'm sitting on your gardening couch as, as um, a way <laughs> to counsel myself. I don't know. But if it does land for somebody, I want you to be encouraged, right? I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I have to keep reminding myself what I say all the time. This is my journey and I'm just sharing it publicly, right? So I'm pretty sure and I have to go back and watch my intro video. I don't think I got on there and said, hey, this is where you can come learn how to be a master gardener. This is where you can learn how to have abundance. And I don't think I said that. If I did, forgive me. <laughs> I hope what I said, because I shot that, I don't know, a year, almost two years ago. I hope what I said is I'm taking you along on my journey and I'm just sharing it publicly. And so if that is my mission and if that is my purpose, then sharing the journey means I share the journey. It means we have moments like this. It means all of those things. It doesn't mean that every video is abundance. It doesn't mean that every video is, is you know, pulled together. And if that's what you're looking for, I'm probably not the person for you, right? And, and, and look, you ain't got to leave. <laughs> Just come back on the abundance videos. If that's what you need, if that's what you want, hey, do you, right? But I bo do believe there is somebody out there because I know I'm not the only one. And I know that that's been me before. When I first started gardening three years ago, it was YouTube videos and people that I watched that taught me that encouraged me and I saw some of their failures and I'm like, okay, it happens to the best of them, right? It happens to the best of them. So, okay, y'all, that's my, that's what's going on with me. So if I'm not like super, super, super as bubbly as I normally am, that, that's, that's what's going on. I got a lot of head stuff, head mindset, but we're going to persevere by God's grace. We are going to persevere by God's grace. Um, and another thing that happens let me say this and then I'm done. And we're going to get into the garden. Another thing that happens is that the devil will make you think that it's only you. He will make you think that, you know what? It's all bad. You don't have no abundance. You can't grow nothing. I don't know. Does Satan talk to y'all like that? Because he, sh I mean, he, in, he be in my head and my voice. Like, girl, what, what do you think? You on that channel, ain't nobody listening to you. And I'm like, they are listening. <laughs> ain't nobody gonna believe that you can't that you growing food and you got all these you got all these pests. They about to stop. They about to leave. Hey, so be it. I am being obedient. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But the reason why I say that is because when I get out of my head, when I get out of my emotions, when I get out of that place of woe is me. I look around and I do, I am growing some stuff, y'all. My husband came out here and picked before I got on video. Y'all, I am growing some food, right? I, I'm not, all the things that I have planted are not producing, 
um, as of yet. But y'all look, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cucumbers, three zucchini, one pepper, and two okra. And yesterday, y'all, I harvested 20 cucumbers, 20. Now my tomatoes and my peppers, like I have tomatoes. Y'all know I've been having tomato, tomato damage. The tomatoes themselves look good. Some of the plants are looking better. It's just not going as fast as I wanted to go. My tomatoes haven't ripened yet. I'm like, okay, seem like they should be ripened by now. Like, I cannot get a one blush. I found this one today. This is God's kiss. Like, just girl, hold on. God will send you like little signs. I saw now this is a Cherokee purple, which is an heirloom. To me, they always mine always look ugly. Like the heirlooms, it's hard to get like a perfect fruit. So you got that right there, but I'm not selling any Cherokee purples. Um, at least I don't think I am. But you can see that one, that little bit of blush. I took it off the thing. I'm like, we're going to let you blush all the way through. And this may not even be edible. This cuss is kind of through the skin. But again, I just picked it because it was blushing. And I just want to see it get its color. And if I can't eat it, it's not a problem. But, um, so I am growing some food. Some stuff is doing well. Just not all the stuff that I wanted it to be okay be encouraged now what are we gonna do we're about to water um before the sprinkler system comes on i mean before the drip tape comes on um so let's do that and yeah let's do that and then we got some stuff oh 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 see 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 with every with every down set there is always a blessing y'all there is always a blessing i gotta tell y'all about these plants that i got uh, oh, wait, I got a blessing to tell you. Hold on. Let me go turn. No, the water is on. Let me go water this real quick before the drip comes on. And then I'm going to come back and show you my blessing. <laughs> so before we talk about the blessing, um, let me give you my ideas about why I'm having some pest pressure. So, and again, this is just my opinion. It's not fact. Um, I do know that plants that are stressed, for lack of a better word, invite the pests. Like I read somewhere, I don't know how true this is. You guys tell me if you can validate this, but I read that plants that are stressed, like kind of release almost like a pheromone. And that's what attracts the um, insects or the pests to them. Um, and, and plants that are more healthy, that have more healthy soil, that are overall healthy, they don't get as much pests. So healthy soil, healthy, healthy plants, less pest pressure, right? Uh, and so I do think that has contributed to it. Now, in terms of the stress, here is my opinion on what I think some of the problem may be. Remember, I started a lot of seeds, 500 plus seeds um, between February and end of March, first part of April, right? And my plan was to plant in the tunnel first and then plant outside. For a couple of reasons, I was off my schedule. One, the weather. Remember, if, you, if you've if you been following me, the weather in my area in Zone 7A, the last frost date was, I think, April 17th, somewhere along in there. Um, but it was still very cold, like 35 to 45 for two or three weeks after that. So I could not plant out there, which means they were in their pots longer. And my eggplant, my peppers, and my tomatoes particularly were red, were like like ready to come out. And with my tomatoes and my eggplant and my peppers, for the most part, I up potted them. There were um, many tomatoes, though I did not up pot because again, I was trying to. I think I ran out. Yeah, I ran out of the big pots. And then I'm thinking I'll put them in the tunnel and all of that. With all of that being said. All of the plants did not get out necessarily on schedule. That would have been best for them in terms of there were a lot of plants that were in their pots. These little bitty pots, um, two and a half inch pots, most of them for a long time. Then I even had some that were still in those um, six packs that I had for longer than they should have been. Right. And so I wonder if that created some stress, root bound, yellowing leaves, you know, trying to revive it, get it back and all that. That's my opinion. I'm guessing. I don't know 100%, but that's my synopsis is that that's one of the reasons why um, I have some stress and I think I have a lot of pests because my plants um, are stressed. 
you guys know I have planted, um, I have done some complaint companion planting. I have marigolds, I have basil, and I have nasturtium are the three primary things that I have in my rows. Now my rows, the holes are 18 inches apart, so I don't have it interplanted like where the basil is up under the tomato, but it could be like tomato, basil, tomato, basil, tomato, marigold, and all that. So maybe I didn't do enough. I, I don't know, but I did more this year than I did last year, and I didn't have this much pest pressure. But regardless, I, this is what this is what we have right now. So um, I also want to give an update. I showed you guys my pepper plants where they've been eating. A lot of you guys said it was you thought it might be horn worm damage, and I think that you're right because when I came out yesterday, it was a big old fat juicy worm on my pepper. Um, needless to say, he 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 died in like 1.3 seconds. Okay eating my food and I've never had hornworms on my peppers I've only ever had them on my tomatoes so again that's new to me didn't know they do peppers anyway because of that I am starting more seeds now my last um my first frost date estimated is October the 19th I think when I checked I have like 114 I don't know 109 to 114 days I don't remember the number when I checked I started some seeds like two days ago and I'm gonna about to start more seeds so I'm kind of on the cusp of whether or not it's gonna work but all I got to lose is seeds so I've tried to start seeds I've started um, I'll show you what I've started I try to start if I'm doing tomatoes I'm trying to pick the varieties that have the earliest maturity so something that has like 80 days versus something that has like 95 days because the difference of 15 days is gonna make a big difference in this regard which is why you start your seeds early. The other thing is, of course, if I buy some transplants, they're further along and I can put them. And I have bought, I have probably bought $30 worth of, of transplants. So that's like six plants because they're like $5.90, $5.48 in the big box stores for one plant. Two years ago, that same plant was $3.48. Okay, so I went to Lowe's today because I've been like piecemealing it. I'm like, I just, I can't see me paying $75, 80 for like six or seven plants. I'm like, this is, this is why I started my seeds. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm in a situation where if I have to pull some stuff out, like my whole pepper row out there, I would say half of the pepper row is decimated. Like it's done. My husband's like, you sure it's, you sure it's not alive? Cause there's a little bit of green. I said, I think that green is just cause he didn't finish his lunch <laughs> not because it's alive but I'm known to throw away something in a minute. Like I will get it up out of my garden. I'm like, you brown, you yellow, you gotta go. My husband is like, it's still alive. Let's give it a chance. Cause he sees one little speck of green. He might be right. But anywho, anywho, half of my peppers are gone. I'm gonna start some more peppers. But again, I feel like I'm kind of like gambling. Like, okay, is it gonna work? Is it not gonna work? I don't know. I'm in zone 7A. It's the last week of June. Am I too late? Because of when, when you look at the packet, it says 85 to 90 days to maturity. But I think that comes from when you transplant it, not from when you start the seed. So let's just say I have 115 days, right? So and it's an 85 day maturity, right? And if that starts at transplant, that means I have 30 days before that. So, you know, it takes a good three to four weeks for your tomato to get to a, a good size, I think, before you can put it out. So if I take 30 days, start the seeds, it becomes a healthy transplant, and then I put it out, and then I put 85 days on that, I'm, I'm literally right at the date. Meaning, okay, is it going to be green tomatoes or will it be red tomatoes by that time? I don't know, y'all, but we're going to find out. It's an experiment because I've never, I've never started tomatoes this late before. Um, I've done green. Like, my succession crops in my mind, like I did tomatoes, remember? probably about six weeks ago now and that's what's in the back of my house but again some of those tomatoes i have one bed of tomatoes in the back of my house that look great the other two beds not so great again they look stressed and i think they were in that they were in the little bitty pots they didn't even get up potted so i think they were just in their pots too long because time i didn't have time to put them out there that's why i'm starting more seeds but let me show you my blessing i went to lowe's to get some plants and i told myself okay get i'm gonna get four plants that's like 20 22 dollars at 548 because i'm like again i just it's hard to pay 548 for one plant 
in my world. Now, if I can get a six pack for five forty eight, dollars even better. But you don't find tomatoes in six packs at Lowe's, Home Depot, at least not in my area, you don't. And I've gone a 45 mile radius. You can find some peppers, like jalapenos and other stuff. But what I really needed was peppers and tomatoes. So I'll go to Lowe's, I get me two tomatoes, and I get me two peppers. Because that's my four plants, right? Even though I probably need it three times that amount. Y'all, I go, because you know they're outside the store. I go, I go to walk in the store, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I had them in my cart. I can't do it. I cannot. And it was a big storm coming. I was 45 minutes away from home. I was on my way home. The, it looked like the, the sky was about to open up. So that was my excuse. I'm like, oh, it's about to start raining. But in reality, it was about to start raining, but I, I just couldn't spend no $20 for four points. $22 plus tax, almost $24. So I'm mosey on my way home and I'm talking to myself, girl, whatever it's going to be, you don't got to have every hole fill. And I'm thinking, I do got to have every hole fill. I got to buy my beds full. I'm telling myself, you don't have to. Or if you do, you don't have to spend the money. Don't want to spend the money. On my way home, there's one of these little plant things where they sell a whole lot of plants. I pass by there a lot. The one that's closest to my house, same thing. I went by there yesterday because you can find plants cheaper. They had already shut their stuff down. No more selling plants. But this particular one was still open. Ten minutes to spare. I whipped in there. Do you have any tomatoes and peppers? She said, yes, we do. Fast forward. Long story short. Most of their tomatoes look like trash. Because they've been in pots for so long. They're yellowing. They have a fruit on them, but they're yellow. And I'm like, I don't want to bring more stressed out plants into my environment. Long story short. Let me show you what I got. Matter of fact, let me show you this. So, I got a whole flat of tomatoes and peppers. You can see that some have yellowing. We tried to pick the best ones that she could. But this lady was so helpful. She's trying to give me the whole story. I'm like, nope, I just really need peppers and tomatoes. And I'm like, I don't know if I got anybody to give them to and all that stuff. And then I was just trying... I don't want to introduce more stress into my thing. So we got the best ones. You can see that some of these have yellow ones, right? Overall, like that looks decent, right? This stem right here has some yellow ones. So they're not perfect. Um, but my thought is I'm going to take off the yellow leaf. I'm about to fertilize them with some fish emulsion and some ultra. And... I'm going to plant them and see what happens. Now, I'm going to watch them carefully. If they start to look bad, I'm yanking them. I'm pulling them. But, y'all, I got this whole flat, which is 36 plants. She gave it to me for $10. Woo! $10, y'all. Don't tell me what the Lord won't do. I got 36 plants for $10. One, zero. Because it's six of these in one flat. And she gave it to me for $10. She would have gave me a lot. She was trying to give me plants for like 50 cents. I'm like, that look like too much like trash. Like these are doable. Let me show you some of the other ones. So this is Bell Peppers, King of the North. I think these look pretty, pretty decent. Y'all to let me know what you think. Right? That's why I got King of the North. And again, the ones that maybe look not so hot, we won't use. But for ten dollars and thirty-six plants all day long. So these are our orange bell pepper, and so you can see these have some spots there. I don't know what that is, so I may not use that one. But like this side looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So I got King of the North, which I've never tried that variety. It's a red bell pepper, orange blaze. Never heard of that one. And then let's see. What else I got? I got a jalapeno, some more jalapeno peppers. Because remember, y'all, I thought I grew some and I didn't. And again, there's some of these that have a little bit of holes in them. Look a little bit. But they don't look any worse than them plants out there. But for the most part, they look definitely more decent. Y'all tell me now. Tell me the truth if you don't think so. Um, and then this is another orange bell pepper so i think that that looks decent
And then this is a Carolina Gold Tomato. I've never heard of it. And again, for the most part, I think it looks pretty decent. I'm going to plant them real deep. Like I said, I'm going to fertilize them like this. I'm just going to take it off. That can be on. I mean, y'all, they look better than the plants in my tunnel. So, and then I have another Carolina Gold Tomato. I've never tried it before, so we're going to try it. But y'all, 36 plants for $10. So that was my blessing. That's to me, the Lord saying, girl, it's going to be okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. Now, let me show you. I told y'all this is a smorgasbord now. <laughs> you still, are you still with me? Are you still with me? I hope you're still with me. Okay. So I planted, excuse me. I started some seeds as you can see here. Um, so let me tell you what I started. I started... Some more eggplant because y'all on the eggplant i showed y'all my eggplant my eggplant was beautiful in the house absolutely beautiful i had like 20 of them them insects tore it up i have one that now has some purple flowers i only got one left has some purple flowers so it may actually produce something and i heard a lot of you tell me that um, eggplant in the beginning will get eaten by pests, but sometimes if you just bear and just keep them in there, they'll start to produce. Well, like I said, I'd be tearing out, I'd be taking it out, taking it out. I got one left, <laughs> it has some purple flowers. Maybe there's hope, but I did some more eggplant. That's this is a fairy tale eggplant which has a um shorter maturity. It's a mini eggplant, it's purple and white stripe. It's a hybrid, and the maturity date on here. Is 65 days so I know that this should be a okay like I should have it if there's no issues with pests I should be able to have this before the first frost date I only did six I'm thinking about I need to do some more I need to do some more okay then I did some more paste tomatoes the reason why and I'm still trying to find my sweet spot of tomatoes like in my mind, if I sell tomatoes, it's going to be cherry tomatoes or slicers. I don't really intend to sell paste tomatoes because I don't think that people would buy that. Plus, I need them for sauce. So really, the paste tomatoes are for me. But when I'm looking at my tomatoes and what I have, I have a lot of cherry tomatoes. Um, and I have slicers, but I feel like I don't have enough paste tomatoes. And some of that is they didn't germinate as well. Um and all of that and then some of them have been just you know not as good versus the cherry tomatoes they like just game busters so i feel like i need some more paste tomatoes if i'm gonna meet my sauce needs for the year so i did some the alpaca which i thought i planted earlier this um year when i did seeds but i didn't i y'all as organized as i was <laughs> i still miss alpaca and um jalapeno but this is what i did last year that I loved. This is 85 days and it says from transplant. So again, we might be right at the cusp, but we're going to pray over it, y'all. We're going to pray over it. Then I did Salvatore, Salvatore, Salvatore Select, which is a paste tomato. I have that out here now. It is, um, the tomatoes look great on it. They look big. They look meaty. They're just green. They haven't blushed yet, but it did wonderful for me last year wonderful 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 it's one of my favorite ones um so i did 12 of those then i did two um large red cherry two trays of that not trays but like the little six pack because the cherry tomatoes i have are the secure in the tunnel which are doing great the matswell wild cherry i showed you that on another video them things small i don't like them and then i have sun gold sun gold is like the you know the, the bright i love those but i want another red cherry tomato and look more large red cherry so i have that then i did some more flowers i did um some sunflowers i did some zinnias and then i did more lettuce and then i did more cucumber so all of those the large red cherry let me see if, this, if the um zinnias i know that i'll get um before the end um uh, because they don't take long uh, let's see sunflowers are 50 to 60 days so that's not a problem um the cucumbers i know are not a problem i can get those and then the lettuce i know that i can get that so i'm starting over so to speak and doing some seeds 
but I am trying to be strategic about which of the kind I'm doing for tomatoes um, and um, things like that. So now I'm going to start some more seeds. Yes, I am. I'm going to do some peppers. I'm going to do some basil, I think, and some other stuff. I'm doing more basil because I had tons of basil. I probably had 30 or 40 basil. I gave a lot of it away and I have a lot of it in my garden. Um, some of it has been, is being eaten by Japanese beetles, regardless of me spraying. And then a lot of it has gone to flower. I've never had my basil go to flower so soon. Like, tell me why that happens. Do y'all know? So I'm afraid that if I try to use it, it's going to be bitter. And I'm like, why is it going to, um, seed? I don't know. We're going to do some more basil. I should be able to get that in. Let me see what else I'm going to do. I brought some more seeds down here. I'm going to do, obviously, some more squash, more zucchini. We're just going to keep that succession going like every 30 days. We're going to keep the succession of lettuce going every 30 days. And we're going to keep cucumbers. I'll probably do cucumbers one more time. But I'm going to do some peppers. And I'm going to do some more paste tomatoes and basil. And I think that's going to be it for today. For today. So, that is what I have going on on um so yeah it's a smorgasbord i guess i'll end right here so this won't be you know eternal oh <laughs> uh, because i feel like i've been talking a long time maybe when i render it it's only like 10 minutes i don't know um but yeah that that's that's what it is today y'all mindset issues but yet i still am growing some food i still have abundance in certain areas just not in all the areas I got more plants as a blessing and I'm starting more seeds and we're going, you know, they say roll the dice. We're going to see if we have enough time. Let me know if you're in zone 7A, if you have started tomatoes and peppers specifically um, at this time of the year and you've been able to harvest red tomatoes and mature bell peppers, like colored bell peppers, not green bell peppers. Now I'll take the green at the end if I have to, but the green tomatoes, I mean, I don't want an abundance of those. I want red ripe tomatoes. Let me know. And then also, keep praying on this garden, y'all. When you think about me, say a prayer. My prayer is that I see some tomatoes blushing, like, real soon. Like, that'll give me another little bit of piece of hope. Like, they green, looking good, but I need you to blush. I need you to ripen. So, anyway, if you're still here, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today on this conglomeration smorgasbord of a um, video. This is real life. I'm about to fertilize these new plants that I got and um, start the seeds. And then I think I'm going to be done because I'll probably only have like, I don't know, 30, 45 more minutes of daylight. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you liked this video, please leave me a comment. Please like it. If you have tips, please leave them down below. And if you like what you're seeing on my channel, you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Share with a friend, share with a neighbor. Gardening is a journey. I'm sharing with you my journey, but what I want above all is that we grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.